The Galician version of Santa is El Apapador, a mythical coal miner who only gives gifts to children who have been eating well. Oh, so this is weird. But there's this tradition in Spain of these little figurines called Gaganed, which depicts a small man defecating in nativity scenes throughout Catalonia and southern France. No one knows when this tradition began, although you can see the same type of stuff in old French cartoons in the 1700s. It's believed to be around 300 years old. But look at this. These figures are wearing the Gatajan red cap, or the Barandina. We'll talk about this in a future video, but these were given out to the public in the early 1800s so that everyone could become a part of the club, even Salvador Dali. The excuses for these figurines is kind of insane, but it still ties into some type of fertilizing ritual. But really what they mean is that these are the same people who worship the fertility gods. It looks like they're shitting on the nativity scene, or sacrilege if you ask me. Let's not forget that Spain has an obsession with torturing bulls as literal professional sport that people watch on TV. It's kind of weird, people are proud of this bullfighting tradition. But these stem from ancient secret occult rituals, early Mithraic rites of sacrifice in which they would sacrifice bulls in subterranean temples. Eastern countries also have Santa. China has Shengdan Laoren, an oriental man with a long white beard dressed in the same red royal attire. There is winter solstice folklore said that eating dumplings is in memory of Fairy Zhao. This is a very interesting legend. In the Liang Dynasty, the emperor believed in Buddhism so much so that he forbade his people to eat meat and to sacrifice meat to the heavenly gods. The heavenly gods were so unhappy with this decision that they made the people suffer a three-year drought. The cypress tree fairy couldn't bear to see her people suffering, and so she turned into a girl named Zhao on the winter solstice. She then taught people to wrap meat in dough and sacrifice the food as offerings to the gods. The gods were so moved by her action, so the rain came. Later, Zhao was murdered by the emperor. To memorize the fairy Zhao and her good deeds, people named the food Zhao Zi, with similar pronunciation was Zhao's name and have made and eaten dumplings since then on her birthday, the winter solstice. In Japan, we have a similar straw figure with a sickle, blatant Saturn symbolism, with these mass demons with horns who would go house to house exercising evil spirits and admonishing lazy people. In India, you have Sai Baba or Christmas Baba, which Sai Baba was an Indian spiritual master considered to be a saint that was then merged with the story of Saint Nicholas. In Russia, you have Dead Moros, which is basically the White Witch of Narnia, as he was a dark sorcerer who had the ability to freeze people. He is a winter snow demon mixed with the green man and wild man of Druidic and English lore. Dead Moros formed separate from Europe's tradition, yet it's the same story. At first, he stole children and brought them away in his gigantic sack. To ransom the kids, their parents had to give him presents. So originally, it was in reverse. Then with the lapse of time, everything turned upside down, or inverted. Under the influence of the orthodox traditions, Father Frost reformed and became kind and started to give presents to kids. Then, he adopted certain traits from Saint Nicholas the prototype of Western Santa Claus. Muslims celebrate Christmas, it's just not called that. The Persian festival Yalda, also a reference to the Gnostic Yalda Bayeth, or Shab e Yalda, in other words, Saturn, is a celebration of the winter solstice in Iran and Turkey. Well, let's take a look at this Iranian or Persian Santa Claus. Haji Firuz, the fire starter, in reference to the ancient Zoroastrian mages who initially created this cult of the eternal flame, would dress up in red attire with a blackened face and perform street spectacles. A prominent Persian historian, Murdad Bahar, speculates that the name Sayawaxis might mean black man or dark-faced man, but then goes on to suggest that the term black in the name may be referenced either to the blackening of the faces of the participants in the aforementioned Mesopotamian ceremonies 
or to the black mask that they wore for the festivities. In Turkey, he's also known as Noel Baba. I also find it interesting that the folklore doesn't really exist here, yet they claim that St. Nicholas comes from here. There's actually this Turkish article where the author is discussing the origins of Santa and even mentions the Crusades and that this man is coming for our children. Thought that was interesting for a Medium article. But he implies that the references of St. Nicholas come from a different time and location. In Africa, modern Santa Claus is represented as a black woman, Mama Tinga Tinga, who wears the same red hat carrying the entire city in her bowl, said to be the mother of all Africa. Now ancient customs in Libya, where Santa is replaced by Old Man Beka or Old Man Beggar, which is a Christmas tradition in Sierra Leone and Guinea as well, these dancers would dress up as dancing devils with mask of the black goat. Many costumes have a similar straw appearance in comparison to Germanic tradition, they seem to be clear pagan rituals and you can also see the red hat and red crown symbolism, the worship of the bull. They seem to be referring to the same thing. Father Christmas is also celebrated in Nigeria. The Nigerian Father Christmas is usually a tall thin black man in an oversized red coat, sweating profusely from wearing the attire in humid weather. Father Christmas in Nigeria doesn't really go home to home, he only goes to parties, but interestingly, this resembles some voodoo priest, which is another topic on its own, but we're speaking of ancient death cults, which is said to have developed in the 16th century with these voodoo priests, and they are equated with the Roman Catholic saints. Quote, Its main structure derives from the African traditional religions of West and Central Africa, which were brought to Haiti by enslaved Africans between the 16th and 19th centuries. On the island, these African religions mix with the iconography of the European-derived traditions such as Roman Catholicism and Freemasonry, taking the form of voodoo around the mid-18th century. In combining varied influences, voodoo has often been described as syncretic or a symbiosis, a religion exhibiting diverse cultural influences. End quote. Mexico does have a Santa Claus. It is Papa Noel, or Father Christmas, Baby Jesus, and Santa Claus himself. Also, the Duendes have red pointed hats and or red top hats connecting with the gnomes. There's also the tradition of the piñatas and the destruction of the star, with the reward of candy or defecation as some strange Freemason blindfolded ritual taught to children. It is interesting that Spain doesn't really focus too much on Saint Nicholas or Santa Claus, but Papa Noel is from the French Santa Claus, and this is where it gets crazy. Well first, this is from the early 1880s to 1900s just like the Cabbage Patch Kids, and they were also promoting this in France during this time to orphans. Many of these French postcards of Père Noel are very creepy and have a similar vibe of promoting something behind the scenes with hidden intentions. Père Noel with orphans. It's the same strange, old colorized, surreal, real photo postcards. Old postcards with illustrations constantly showing Papa Noel with dolls bringing children toys and gifts. But as you keep looking at these, you start to see a trend. Many of these dolls have the red hats, or these children are given red hats. They are the jokers of folly, 
jesters, or perhaps this is Pinocchio. Some of these depictions show these dolls or early toy humans with life, as if they're tiny children or tiny humans. But then there are other depictions of these dolls being dropped through the chimney. And if we consider the reset population postcards of the Cabbage Patch Kids from the same era, is it possible that one of these gifts could have been babies? Here, we see a depiction of Papa Noel importing children. They literally call him Daddy Christmas. He also travels in a blimp, which in many depictions, you'll see the same strange lifeless dolls that he brings that seems to be referencing something else. Even one of them is a wrapped baby. You can see him traveling with Christkind, which is also the angel that we put on top of the tree, representing Jesus in Christmas. But it gets even stranger because specifically with the French Santa Claus, or Père Noël, he's followed by another character similar to Krampus and Swarthy Pete, Le Père Fuerta, who is a sinister figure dressed in black who spanks children who have been misbehaved. The first story of Pierre Fuerta was first told in 1252. Remember the three children in the butcher story? Well, this is an alternative version of the story with a different date. Apparently, it wasn't a butcher. It was an innkeeper who captures these three wealthy boys on their way to a religious boarding school. He kills the children, cuts them into pieces, and then stews them in a barrel. Now, Saint Nicholas, or Père Noël, found out about this in this version of the story. After he resurrects the three children, the butcher who killed the children is Père Fuerta, who literally was forced by Saint Nicholas to become his assistant as punishment for his crimes. Another story states that during the Siege of Metz, a city in eastern France, in 1552, an effigy of King Charles V was burned and dragged through the city. Meanwhile, an association of tanners created a grotesque character, also a tanner, armed with a whip and bound in chains who punished children. After Metz was liberated, the charred effigy of Charles V and the character created by the tanners somehow assimilated into what is known as Baird Fuerta. Events surrounding the city's liberation and the burning of the effigy coincided with the passage of Saint Nicholas. Hence, Baird Fuerta became his bad cop counterpart. He was also promoted in the US as Father Flog or Spanky. Flogging is torture, and Mother Flog would cut the tongues out of lying children. Bel Fuerta is a man with a sinister face with a long beard, armed with a whip, large stick, or bundle of witches. He is also seen wearing a wicker backpack in which children can be placed in and carried away. Just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, while searching for Bear Fuerta, a wiki was saying that this shouldn't be confused with another phenomenon called Monsieur Groc Mitan. And this is just insane. There are French depictions of young children being taken, similar to Krampus. And it seems that there are references to turning the children into young dolls, mannequins, or mind-controlled minions with their red hats. There are many alchemy symbols. Grokmi Don would lock the children in their house, which is a toad and snake infested prison, spank them with birch rods and martinets, and then force them to wear donkey caps for shame. What's strange is that this name, Grokmi Don, is in reference to these boogeymen who would come in and punish children. Yet, some of them look like the witches and bugbears that we mentioned before. There are many different terms for this throughout history. Hans von Chota, who was a German knight and marshal of the Palatinate, which is what I was saying was Santa actually being a Palatine, a Templar, or priest of Cybel. It would seem that most of these tales stem from around the Dark Age period, or early 1500s. In the Alsace region of France, Hans Trapp is the worst story of them all, yet not as well known as Bière Fuerta. In the 15th century, there was no border between France and Germany at Wisenberg, which was part of the Holy Roman Empire. Hans Trapp, Hans Trott, or Hans von Trotha, whose coat of arms is the raven and red fox, 
was the German knight and marshal over this palatinate or owned corporation of the Vatican. When he was given the title of Chevalier d'Or, he was enfiefed two castles from the Holy Emperor. So he was given ownership or property for his services, and the castles were part of his payment. The Abbot of Wisenberg, the former owner of the site, protested that things had not been done correctly. He denounced the existence of the irregularities in the acquisition of Berwartstein Castle. In fact, when the monks learned that the castle had been given to an ambitious foreigner, they appealed to the elector in Heidelberg, the latter decided in favor of Hans von Chota. So basically, a foreigner comes in and is just given this property, the previous owner is upset because he's being sued over irregularities in the building, possibly it's already damaged, but even with all that, Von Trotta wins the case and he's still mad at these monks and then gets revenge on them? So what he does is he builds this artificial dam to reroute the water, eventually actually flooding the city and causing great economic damage. The monks protested and so the abbot appealed several times to the Holy Roman Emperor, but nothing was done. He pleaded to Pope Innocent VIII and later found favor with Pope Alexander VI. They call Hans van Trotta to appear in the court, and in return, he wrote back saying that he refused to go, but that he was loyal to the church. He also threw a few insults at the Pope, accusing him of immorality. And so, he was banished from society. Now that's the historical side. The legends, however, share even more details. It is said that he was a bloodthirsty brute, power-hungry and violent, his sole purpose to terrorize the population by looting travelers and peasants. It is said that he gained his power and strength by making a pact with the devil. He is the original boogeyman and was eventually said to have been punished by God by being turned into a scarecrow for the crime of eating the flesh of a young shepherd. He is the earliest German French Santa Claus and is actually based off of a historical figure this Palatine Knight, and he developed a taste for human flesh? He would actually disguise himself as a scarecrow, so it wasn't a punishment? Adorned with straw, he would wait for lonely young victims to come down the road. He stabbed a young shepherd specifically in the back while using this scarecrow costume. After he had cut the child into pieces and roasted his flesh, he was struck by a divine lightning bolt and killed. Children are still warned that Han's trapped spirit lingers on and may visit them, which is pretty horrifying as this Han's trap is also associated with Christ Child, which is essentially a young lady liberty with gifts. Strangely, he's actually referenced as the Black Knight in many legends. The idea is that because the Catholic Church was having a dispute with him, he went on a killing rampage. It's very interesting that we have documentation on this actual historical figure from the 15th century. Yet, did he do this in retaliation? Or was it what he was serviced for? Hans Trapp also had a white beard, pointed hat. He was 6'5", or 2 meters. He dressed in a black coat and big black boots. He is a robber knight that appears on horseback. When he arrives, he asks the children if they've been good in order to scare them into good behavior. He approaches them with a cage full of trapped children screaming, free us, help us. So wait, this is Santa? Or at least, this is the figure with the most historical background. He's literally one of the oldest references for the orphans and orphan trains. It's the same thing, they just have to give us different stories to hint to these same horrifying events. Okay, so let's go back to the main French Papa Noel or Père Noel from the 1800s. Oh remember, so there are two. Papa Noel, which is the good Santa in red, and then Père Fuerta, which is the bad Santa. The older French-German Santa from the 1500s is actually just one figure, there are not two. But the good and bad Santa is both one figure who wears a big coat and punishes or steals children on orders of the Catholic Church. 
Well, these postcards make much more sense now, because some of these actually aren't Papa Noel. It's Bear Fuerta, who's coming to capture the children. These are the exact same postcards, for the same era as the Cabbage Patch Kids. Bear Fuerta is the butcher who originally killed the children in that 18th century story. He also has a big black coat, black boots, and wears a deer mask. Another name for this figure is La Belle La Boque, which means father bag in old French, or even another term for scrotum. This Santa is a child thief, and the Templars, or elite Phoenician Brotherhood who have created different layers or forms of this symbol in order to hide this secret, such as with the gift giving ceremony, Christkind is really just there to lighten the mood. They took the values of Christ and Hans van Trapp and merged it under one symbol of Santa Claus. He is a toy maker, specifically using elves to make human-like dolls, as with the story of the butcher. They were pickling human remains similar to the alchemist. Santa draws parallels to the green man and the druids, but I believe we're dealing with the corrupted Canaanite Phoenician priesthood when some people reference these pagan symbols as the druids, those of the yew tree, eventually becoming the Jews who stole the foundation of the Tree of Life, the priest of the Kabbalah. The Green Man can be seen in Christian churches and cathedrals from around the world. The connections with Christmas and the Druids are numerous, including the reference of mistletoe, which would be harvested by an ancient Druid priest with a golden sickle and was never allowed to touch the ground. Father Christmas in England originally was a depiction of the Green Man or a Druid wild man, crowned with the holy wreath a staff, a wassail bowl, and yule log. The green man is a reference for the true gift giver of not only a life in nature, but the ancient priesthood in which the new Jesuit Vatican Church or Holy Roman Empire had received her knowledge from an already existing church of Iessa. We're talking a hijack on an unbelievable scale. Santa Claus and his connection with children didn't come to England until the mid 19th century when stories of Santa Claus and St. Nicholas were merged with the already existing Christmas figure. The Green Man is also an alchemical symbol for rebirth. Why would such a pagan symbol be found in these churches? The three-headed Christ? Is this connected with the three children who were killed and then revived by St. Nicholas? In order to understand Santa, we had to accept that this is not a reference to just one figure but to some type of system of control using these Palatine families. St. Nicholas actually has a Greek cousin. St. Nicholas is not the only gift-giving bishop, there's St. Basil, St. Baal, which I think is no accident because Basil or Baal is also the origin of the Rosicrucians. He's also called St. Vasilios in Greek, and the St. Vasilios coat of arms is a double-headed phoenix. He also shares the same Templar symbols in his paintings. They also look exactly alike if you ask me. He too was in support of the new Holy Roman Church in the Nicene Creed. Known as Saint Basil the Great, he was the Bishop of Caesarea in Cappadocia, which is located in modern day Turkey. He was an important theologian and one of the three Cappadocian Fathers. There's not much on him other than that he was a contemporary of St. Nicholas during his time. The only difference is that St. Basil is for the Eastern churches, and that he was the patron of hospital administrators. In Romania, Moscoșun is a version of Santa who originated from legends of a shape-shifting demonic shepherd who refuses to receive the Virgin Mary to give birth in his stable. The rife of Crescuna, Crescuna or Crescunisa, in the study of Pericles Papa Hagi, secretly receives and inherits Jesus. Verus Kostruna cuts off her hands, but then the Virgin Mary glues them back together? So we're back to the story of Bafana and the nativity scene. This time, Santa Claus is there and doesn't want to help with the birth of Jesus and actually cuts the hands of his wife off because she did this behind his back? which would make her three separate pieces and then glued back together. There's another witch-like Christmas figure that we didn't mention, Grilla from Icelandic legend, who is an ogre, troll, monster, or giantess typically associated with Christmas. 
She was mentioned as a giantess in the Prose Edda, but wasn't associated with Christmas until the 17th century. She specifically has an appetite for mischievous children who she cooks in a pot. It gets weirder, because she is the mother of the Yule Lads, or the Icelandic Santas. There are 13 in total, and they all have their red Phrygian hat, along with the gnome symbolism. They are troublemakers, thieves, and on each day, a different Santa or Yule Lad will come into each with their own personality. Similar to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, 